This is Twit. Google's open source maintenance crew. Uh, recall that two weeks ago, we first talked about the Open SSF, the tongue twister, uh, Open Source Security Foundation. At that time, I enumerated the gratifyingly large number of participating and supporting companies, pretty much a who's who, and even some you wouldn't expect. Uh, and the occasion two weeks ago was their announcement of that package analysis project, which in just one month, they said, had identified more than 200 malicious packages which were present in the Python and JavaScript repositories. And recall that I was a bit wary at, at this point of getting too excited about this particular effort, although I applaud the whole concept of an open source security foundation, as we'll see. Uh, but in this case, it appeared that they were mostly just scanning, doing static code scanning for references to previously known malicious domains and IPs, okay, which would all be trivial to change once it became clear to the bad guys that this was the way to avoid being picked up by this particular detector. So that's not going to take long to fix. And like, you know, that, that malware will be back under a different name using an unknown domain and apparently not go detected. Anyway, we'll see. But as for the open SSF effort overall, uh, I'm very bullish about the prospect of this. Uh, it's what has been needed for now quite some time. Uh, those of us who are old enough to have our hair thinning uh, will remember once upon a time when open source software was sort of a counterculture phenomenon. You know, back in the days when source code was not commonly shared for any purpose, and the idea of doing that was kind of bizarre. You know, I mean, even shareware was still closed source. It was just, you know, please pay me if you find this useful, but it's still mine. Um, and back then, the idea of software being free represented a clear threat to the interests of commercial proprietary software vendors. In fact, in February of 2001, Microsoft's Jim Alchin publicly stated that, quote, open source is an intellectual property destroyer. He said, I can't imagine something that could be worse than this for the software business and the intellectual property business, unquote. Well, yeah, I guess that's sort of obviously true. Uh, and, and then early the following year, in January of 2002, one of Microsoft's chief strategists, Craig Mundy, addressing New York University School of Business, said that releasing source code into the public domain is unhealthy, <laughs> causes security risks. Yeah, you wouldn't want anybody else to, to look at your code and find all those bugs. And as he said, quote, as history has shown, while this type of model may have a place, it isn't successful in building a mass market and making powerful, easy to use software broadly accessible to consumers. Okay, well now, that was then, and no one is holding Microsoft responsible for anything that was said 20-plus years ago. The world today is an entirely different place, but it does remind us just how much things have changed in 20 years. And we know that change is slow. We also know that the open-source model has produced tremendous wealth, both intellectual and economic. I saw somewhere... And this was it was an old stat, so I didn't put, put, add it to the show notes. But years ago, it was estimated that sixty billion dollars of wealth had been created and just sort of dumped into the public community by open source software. Um, and as we know, it's become a crucial component of today's software technology landscape, which even Microsoft has now begun to embrace today. It is entirely possible to operate a major enterprise using nothing but open source software, which says a lot. But 
its problems are also many. The trouble is, as I mentioned at the top of the show, that volunteer effort is much more interested in creating new stuff than in maintaining and securing it. It's not that maintenance and security focuses are absent, but as we've seen, so much maintenance and security focus is needed beyond just getting something to work that it's a big ask. And truly securing software, understanding the many ways in which code which works can still be made not to work, requires an entirely different mindset and a very different type of of specific education and training. So many major organizations are now benefiting from the work that has been done for them that having them join a foundation so that they have an organized platform for giving something back, especially when it's about improving the crucial security of the software they are now all using within their own enterprises and on their network borders, it's the right thing to do. And the open SSF looks like it's, you know, the foundation that's going to succeed. We're talking about this today Because last Thursday, Google made a major announcement about specific new support for this effort. Google wrote, Today, we joined the Open Source Security Foundation, OpenSSF, Linux Foundation, and industry leaders for a meeting to continue progressing the open source security initiatives discussed during January's White House Summit on Open Source Security. During this meeting, Google announced the creation of its new Open Source Maintenance Crew. That is the meeting on Thursday of last week. Opens, they, Google announced the Open Source Maintenance Crew. They wrote a dedicated staff of Google engineers who will work closely with upstream maintainers on improving the security of critical open source projects. In addition to this initiative, we contributed ideas and participated in discussions on improving the security and trustworthiness of open source software, which is why our picture of the week was so apropos. Amid all this momentum and progress, they wrote, it is important to take stock on how far we've come as a community over the past year and a half. In this post, we will provide an update on some major milestones and projects that have launched and look towards the future and the work that still needs to be done. And I'm not going to share all of it, but a little, just a little, it's sort of the preamble of that. They wrote, a little over a year ago, we published No Prevent Fix, which laid out a framework for how the software industry could address vulnerabilities in open source software. At the time, there was a growing interest in the topic, and the hope was to generate momentum in the cause of advancing and improving software supply chain security, and amen to that. So they said the landscape has changed greatly since then, a year and a half. They have they had, they highlighted three points. They said prominent attacks and vulnerabilities in critical open source libraries such as Log4J and and CodeCov made headline news, bringing a new level of awareness to the issue in unifying the industry to address the problem. Second, the U.S. government formalized the push for higher security standards in May of last year, 2021, with the Executive Order on Cybersecurity. The release of the Secure Software Development Framework, a set of guidelines for national security standards on software development, sparked an industry-wide discussion about how to implement them. And finally, last August, technology leaders, including Google, Apple, IBM, Microsoft, and Amazon, invested in improving cybersecurity. And Google alone pledged $10 billion over the next five years to strengthen cybersecurity, including $100 million to support third-party foundations like OpenSSF, 
that manage open source security priorities and help fix vulnerabilities. So I, I'm finishing their quote saying, in light of these changes, the no prevent fix framework proved prescient. Beyond just the increased discussion about open source security, we're witnessing real progress in the industry to act on those discussions. In particular, the open SSF has become a community town hall for driving security engineering efforts, discussions, and industry-wide collaboration. And again, I will say what I said two weeks ago. I will encourage any of our listeners who are so inclined to go over, over to OpenSSF.org and po poke around, con con consider perhaps getting yourself involved. Uh, Google's post goes into greater details about their plans for participation, but I wanted to just follow up on our introduction of the Open SSF two weeks ago to note that this is looking like the organization that's going to succeed. Previous efforts were well-meaning but premature, and as history shows, visionaries are often too far ahead of the pack. You know, as the saying goes, they, they're the ones who get the arrows in their backs. Uh, and then, you know, just because they're out in front and they're like they they get the problem, but there's just not enough yet, you know, mass behind them. Uh, to me, it feels like the open source movement is finally being recognized and is earning the respect it deserves. And it may have taken something like the scare of the Log4J vulnerability at the beginning of this year to give major organizations a bit of a wake up call. Uh, to realize just how dependent they had slowly grown on open source solutions through the years. But either way, it appears that it's finally happening now. And, you know, bravo. Uh, we, we really need some someone to take a look at the things that have sort of just been created with no oversight and no real focus on security uh, in mind and and get them strengthened.